All right, time for another busy day in HVAC service. Uh, downtown Wilmington here. About to head uptown. Uh, no cool call. We got plenty of calls today, three or four of them. And may not be able to do them all. Uh, we'll see if we can get some video of those calls. See if we can find something interesting. All right, here's our first call of the day. No cool in Ogden, North Carolina. Let's see if we can cram all these calls in. It may not happen. Only if they're all capacitors. So uh, we'll see what's going on in the first one here and see if we can work our way around. All right, the first call is we got an old Ream here. Just turned 17. And look, the gauge is the first thing in. It's bad news already. 27 pounds of pressure indicates that it has a dramatic leak. Uh, serviced it about a year and a half ago and it had to put a pound in it then, so it's been shedding quite a bit of refrigerant since then. So maybe a possible replacement here. The pressure still looks good. It was encased in all that insulation there. Must have been quiet. Just a rough looking old machine. The TXV looks like hell. So. Okay, the first call ended with the customer deciding to change this one out. 17 years old. Uh, probably going to go with the Heil. Alright, here we are on call number two. Uh, sort of a maintenance check just to make sure the units are doing okay. Old train XE1200s. Defrost control, start circuit, and run, one, or run circuit. Uh, contact and probably advised to replace that because of. All the arcing looks like it's been done there. Uh, dual runs fine, starts fine. We're about to go inside and check uh, the blower section as far as amps and things like that. And then we'll turn on the outdoor section and check charge and things like that. All right, we're at the air handler section now. TWE 048 from 2001. Uh, sort of the same track house sort of thing. Uh, they did use metal duck, but you know they use black flex to save a little bit of money and things like that. Uh, R4.2 was the rating at the time. Now it's R8. So what I did, I went and checked the blower amps and blower capacitor, and they both checked out okay. Uh, drain pan, not in the best shape. It's kind of coming undone at the seam right there. They had problems with water. So we're going to check, see if there's any other issues that need our attention on this one. I'll check the coil by looking through here and see how it looks. All right, I'm going to take this flex duck off here, return duck. So I can get a look at that evaporator coil in there, see if it's dirty or not. Uh, I like to use like 12 by 12 fire damper access doors. They just flange just to duck like a duckboard collar, and you can just tape them, and uh, they seal up pretty tight. But I don't have any with me, and you can't always get people to pay for that. So I'm just gonna look through the return duck. All right, let's check her out into the abyss. It's uh, it's pretty clean actually. No worries. I always love barometric bypass dampers. These really work good. Wow, that's good. Yep, fantastic. All right, I took that bypass damper off so we can look inside the other air handler. There's two up here. Uh, this one is a multi-zone, two-zone, master bedroom suite, and finished room over the garage. So it looks pretty good in there, really. Got it up for a good time. Coil, a lot of water on the coil is what you see right there. A little bit of rust like you'd expect. Everything looks pretty good, really. All right, here's our blower section of the smaller unit, which is a two-ton heat pump train. Probably recognize it. A train number <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the yellow wire because I'm going to turn it back on and check the blower but I don't want the compressor coming on because the power still onto the compressor and I'm going to check the blower amps uh, check the capacitor I'm about to put it back up in a little harness it tested just fine so we're going to kind of simulate if a float switch tripped uh, here's our doofus of the day award for HVAC you see they have these knockouts for the wires and these holes right here are perfect for wires, except for that's how the front latch is on, so you can't put the front on anymore and protect the panel because you ran a bunch of wires in there. But look over here, there's a knockout, because that was too far. So it was this one, this one, and this one. 
Looks like on the big boy here, the four ton, we are a little low on refrigerant. Superheat's a little high, subcooling's a little low. That's pretty good right there, right? Right pretty close there. Our subcooling's coming up a little bit more like it should be. So we're looking pretty good. Grab a little sweat back there. So we're about done with this bad boy. Gonna transfer over to his little brother over here. Now here's the bad part of Wilmington. I've got those calls done. I checked out those two train units. Uh, I didn't really get to see much about the second one. I didn't film much on that one. It's about the same deal as the first. It was a little bit low in uh, refrigerant. And it might just be that it's been low in refrigerant the whole time because people never weigh the refrigerant into line sets. They just release it and go on their merry way. But now I'm stuck in some 5 o'clock traffic here going down College Road in Wilmington. It's the same way every day. But I got two more calls still. Probably won't get to one of them. I'll probably put it off for tomorrow morning. It's a daycare in Burgal. Then I have Lady's House in Rocky Point to go to. Up near my house. See that up there? It's Jimbo's Breakfast House. If you ever go to Wilmington, that's a great place to eat right there. Alright, this is day two of service calls galore. I have a train or American Standard Unit under a daycare. And they have sealed the crawl space and sealed the train unit. Uh, it's going to be hard to work on it and then replace this crap once they uh, have to access that coil as well. Because I think it's dirty. Really interesting way they've done this. And really non-effective. Yeah, our evaporator coil is pretty dirty. You can tell. Fries up yesterday. Really, we should be pulling this coil out and cleaning it. But it's at a daycare. They don't really have the time for me to pull it out and let the heat build up in the building. I got preventive maintenance coming up on this, so I might have to pull it out then. There's still a little ice down there, you can see. But it looks pretty rough. Alright, we're heading off to Wilmington, North Carolina to buy some evaporator cleaner. I have a spray type that I use when I'm going to clean them in place, but I'm going to pull this evaporator out since it looks so horrible. Now we're just going to clean it outside of the uh, crawl space so we can do a good job on it. So I'm going to go into uh, McCall Southeast and get some evaporator cleaner and we're going to coil gun the hell out of it. Alright, we pumped the system down, shutting off the liquid service valve then depressing the contactor with a, I use a stick because it's non-conductive in the cooling mode in order to pump all the refrigerant into the outdoor coil so we can pull out the indoor coil. Alright, here's our evaporator. About to spray it off with a hose and push some cleaner on it because it looks horrible. Okay, I had to take the coil across the street because uh, there wasn't enough water pressure at the old uh, deck here too. <clears throat> Use the coil gun. So I brought it over here. Actually, I live next door. There's the old train package unit right there. A couple people ask about that. There's the XL 1200 heat pump. And there she goes. I'm about to spray her down. Well, that's what's in our coil here. Disgusting. And we didn't even get to clean it as good as I would like to because you can see here the coil's actually been eaten away by crap all through the years. destroyed her TXV check valve got a lot of the dirt off of there but there is just a lot of damage to this coil I recommended they change it out because of the condition of the air handler put a package unit in so you can service it outside correctly and it will sit in that damn crawl space okay I've got the coil back in the unit I fitted up a dryer there as much for protection for the TXV as anything else see make sure no other funk passes through there to the TXV they probably will change the system, but I don't know how long it'll be before they actually do it. Uh, so, I'm going to put a filter in that air handler too, so we can change it monthly, if uh, if that ever comes up. Just to try to protect that filter, or that coil, a little bit more. Because the return duct's leaking, you can tell from the amount of dust inside of it. So, plenty of dust is getting into the system uh, after the filter grill itself. So, it needs a little bit more protection. But, uh, go ahead and sweat this in. And then we're gonna put some nitrogen on it. Well, I'm finishing up down here. Got that filter dryer brazed in. Uh, got the suction line brazed in. Uh, put 110 pounds of pressure on it. It held for about 15 minutes. It didn't even move. It's kind of nice to have the digital gauges because it tells you tenth 
of a PSI, so I know we didn't move it all. Uh, I just want to show you guys the return duck. That is the return duck right there. That is disgusting. All that air would have seeping in after the filter. I mean, the filter wasn't catching all this. It was coming in from a pan return floor joist or something like that. So I put in this filter in the unit to try to stop that. At least while we're trying to save a some AC for the kits until we can get something better in here. Well, there we go. Alright, I took the system down to 600 microns, R22. Uh, now we're putting the charge back into it. It's uh, going back into the lines and we'll restart it. Uh, with a lot happier evaporator uh, than before. Still not in great shape, but I uh, ought to give them some cooling in the time being. Uh, so we'll have to check our subcooling and uh, we should be good to go hopefully. All right, we started her up here, R22, 140 over 65 thereabouts. Uh, design subcooling is 10, and I'm sure we'll get up there here in just a minute. Uh, probably passed it a little bit. It was overcharged before, and I had to reclaim two pounds. It was still a little bit overcharged, but uh, we were within range. So, superheat's a little high for my liking. Uh, to me, TXP's are supposed to control superheat a little bit better than I've seen the last few TXP's control it, uh, for whatever reason. But it looks like we're squared away. Uh, get some cooling in there for all the little children, and they will be happy. And I can go on to the next call.